I am so disappointed and I'm like, Ugh, I wish there was more. I'm not even gonna give this one any time of day. Huh? That's it? For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, a half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest pain in the box. If you're new here, or if you have not yet already done it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I do drop videos every week, from performances to fabs and drabs to rumored casts of RuPaul Drag Race, and I have many more ideas to come. So today we are going to be doing something a little bit differently. So, uh, over, for the past couple of years, literally two, I have been obsessed with Eurovision. It is the campiest, most draggiest thing I have ever seen, and I've truly fallen in love with it. Having grown up in Canada myself, I actually didn't really know much of Eurovision, but girl, it is my new obsession. And since it is my new obsession and is happening uh, this weekend, I thought it would be fun to fab or drab the turquoise carpet. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, what is the turquoise carpet? You're not alone because I had no idea this even existed until this year. The turquoise carpet is basically like a red carpet, but for Eurovision, so it is turquoise. So the contestants are just gonna walk the red carpet. And I thought it would be fun to play my favorite game. That is right, it is another episode of Fab or Drab. But this time we are rating the looks of the Eurovision turquoise carpet and letting you know which looks are fab and fabulous and which ones are drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where I will let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. Girl, I am so excited to get into it. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, we have Azerbaijan and Azerbaijan is coming in with Fahird and Irkirin. Girl, we are starting off a rough. So I apologize if I screw up every name. I probably will screw up every name, but we are not here to talk about the contestants. We are here to talk about the fashion. So please forgive me. So for Azerbaijan, we have these two gentlemen. One is wearing a like a beige suit from head to toe, while the other guy is wearing more of this sort of military inspired outfit. And I'm thinking to myself, are these two supposed to be a duo? Because they look nothing alike. The gentleman on the left is in this really more traditional uh, beige color. And I'm thinking to myself, is this what the Eurovision red carpet is gonna be about? Because this is quite plain. I was expecting a little bit more. Now, for those of you who do not watch Eurovision, Eurovision is quite like over the top and campy for a stage performance, but I had never seen the turquoise red carpet, but I pictured the turquoise red carpet to be more like like the MTV Music Awards where a little bit of everything goes but you still want to like show up and this gentleman in the beige did not show up he looked a far too plain for this carpet however on the other side his friend is in this sort of like military uh outfit and I'm quite loving it I feel like this is just the right amount of camp right amount of fashion and right amount of concept that really works really well for something like this you don't want to go over the top theatrical but you also don't want to go like super boring uh like Grammys attire either you know what I mean you want to have that personality I like the green and green combo I like all the straps I like everything that's going on except for the sunglasses. The sunglasses look so cheap in comparison to the rest of the look. It feels a little bit try hard, but then again, it is Eurovision and Eurovision is a little bit try hard. So for these two, I am unsure where to go because I like one, but I don't like the other, uh, but I do feel like they've tried. So all in all, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a drab. Next up, it's Armenia, and Armenia is coming out with Landoneva, and Landoneva is a duo, a couple, a brother and sister. I actually don't know what the relationship with the, between these two are, but they are a dynamic duo on the stage. She's coming out in this lace dress with this sort of corseted top, and he is coming out in the most little debonair black on black suit. First off, let's start with her. She is uh, looking great in this lace. I find that this is a really interesting uh, take because actually this is a very modest outfit. Everything is lined and no skin is shown. And I find that really fascinating where she can do this sort of like 
peekaboo reveal, but actually not really show anything. On top of it, she's paired with this like corset, which definitely gives her uh, the shape of a body, but again, keeps it very modest in a way. And I love that. I definitely think she understood the assignment when it came to the turquoise red carpet, which was uh, take your individual fashion, put it onto the runway and show us who you are. And I think that this did that. Now, now we move on to the gentleman and he is wearing a black on black suit. Now, I will say that I love this little chain detailing on this tuxedo suit, but that's sort of where it ends. Is it a great suit? Yes. Does he look good in it? Yes. But that's not hard when you look, when you both look like this, like they just look great. The only problem I have is I wish there was a little bit more theatrics in his outfit. I also wish that he would have matched his partner a little bit. Imagine he did this exact same look, but the shirt underneath was made of the same lace as her dress. Oh my God, that would have just put that little cherry on top of this whole look. Could this have been better? Yes, but uh, am I gonna drab it? No, I am definitely gonna go ahead and give it a five. Next up, it's Australia, and Australia is being represented by Electric Fields. Now, Electric Fields is also a dynamic duo, but these people understood that they wanted to make a statement on the runway. We have the person on the left, which is coming out in this big covered moment that's got this beautiful paint detailing on it, and it's definitely giving you that vibe that you're looking for. But then the person on the right is coming in in this sleeveless shirt with all the detailing and pants. I will say that both of these two people look great individually. They both understood the assignment. They both really went there and that I could really appreciate. But yet again, I have a problem when a duo is coming out being so differently dressed from each other. I wish there was something bringing them together. For example, they could have kept these exact same looks but just kept the same color schemes in each other's outfits and that would have just been that little red thread that would have tied them together that I think could have brought this to the next level. All in all, is this bad? Absolutely not. This is actually super fantastic, but is it gonna get my top marks? No, it is not because you need to color coordinate if you wanna get my top marks. That being said, it is still definitely gonna be a ah. Next up, we have Austria, and Austria is being represented by Kayleen. And Kayleen is coming out in this like jacket dress sort of attire. It definitely feels like a drag cover up. And you know, I appreciate a little bit of a drag cover up. The jacket is made of like this vinyl sort of latexy material, uh, and it goes from shoulders to floor, and it's got lining of the gold inside. You can see that this jacket is impeccably made. The only problem that I have with this jacket is that we're not getting that va 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 boom moment. Does she look good? Yes, she looks good. But you're on your vision and there's like 30 people competing. So you want to stand out and I just don't feel like this does enough to stand out from the competition. And that's where I really wish she would have pu pushed it. For example, I think that had she done this, but reversed the colors where the jacket was gold and the inside was black, I think that would have really made that like pow moment that you needed because you will see that there's a lot of people that came in black, but not a single one came in gold. I also wish she would have brought some of the drama up to her face. Her face is beautiful. She looks like a stunning, gorgeous woman, but I am missing that drama. She's really got this fresh face look, which doesn't really give turquoise red carpet. I wish a sort of like a graphic eyeliner, something a little bit edgy would have really turned it out. All in all, this is a very middle of the road look, so it is gonna get a very middle of the road rating, but it is still gonna be good enough to get a five. Next up, it is a Belgium, and Belgium is being represented by Musi. Now, for all of you Drag Race fans, specifically Drag Race Belgium's fans, you might recognize Musi as being a permanent judge on the judging panels of Drag Race Belgique. So when I heard that Musi was gonna be competing on Eurovision, I was excited to see what kind of outfits he was gonna turn up. So when the turquoise red carpet came and he showed up in this, I was like, huh? That's it? Uh, I was expecting so much more. If you see his outfits on Drag Race, they are a little bit over the top and a little bit campy. And I could mostly see a lot of those outfits being used for Eurovision. Additionally, he is surrounded by drag queens and queer talent, so I really thought he was gonna be bringing it to the runway, pun intended. So what he ultimately decided to choose is this white shirt that goes all the way to the floor with these black pants and this is sort of a black middle corset. 
Is it a bad look? No, it is not a bad look. I feel like he definitely added a little bit of that personality into it. But like I said, I was just expecting more because I know who he is and I know where he judges and I know a little bit of his career. So I feel like I could be extra difficult with him. That being said, is it bad enough to get a draft? Absolutely not. This is a very good, but yet again, in my opinion, just middle of the road. And so if it's middle of the road, you're going to get a middle of the road rating yet again, and it's going to be a soft next up we have croatia and croatia is being represented by baby lasagna what a wild name for a group baby lasagna the one thing i will say about the name of that group is that you will remember it but let's get into this red carpet look they decided to wear snowsuits to the red carpet Girl, what the hell is going on here? Let's start with the positives. The one thing that I will say is that I like that these people look like a group. You have these three guys wearing these lace masks, and then you see the lace in the girl's top. So you get a little bit of cohesion there. They're also all dressed in black and white to give you a cohesion as a group, except for the lead singer who's got that pop of red. And as a lead singer, I feel like you could stand out a little bit. So I do think that that is really great. They also all seem to be coming or going from the same venue party because they all decided to come in these sort of like big jackets like they've just entered a snowy weather but then again they are Croatian going to a Malmo in Sweden in the middle of April so for them it might actually be winter who knows but that's kind of where the positive ends then we got to talk about the elephant in the room why the hell are you wearing a freaking jacket on a runway this looks crazy girl what is going on? I mean, you said you wanted to make a statement, you made it, but I don't know if it's made the statement you thought it was making. I think this is so weird and a random choice for a red carpet. I also don't feel that it's that elegant overall. If you are gonna do a coat, why not do like a sort of Margella, like big puffer coat and make it like this fashion moment. This just really feels like you went to the store and bought a coat, you know what I mean? Um, all in all, it is not my favorite. I am not digging these vibes. And despite all the great things I said about it, it is definitely gonna be a drab. Next, we have the Czech Republic, and the Czech Republic is being represented by Aiko. Aiko is coming out in this black sequence a lace dress with these sequence black lace arm covers. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure because this feels very meh. And like I've been saying, on the red carpet, I need a little bit more than meh. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't really know. And honestly, I don't really care. And that is sort of the problem. I want you to care. I want to care about you as an artist. I really don't have a lot to say. And since I don't have a lot to say, and there are so many contestants to go into, I will just go ahead and rate it. I'm going to rate it a very meh. And if I'm going to rate it a meh, it means you are middle of the road, boring, forgettable, but not bad. And therefore, you're going to get a soft... Five. Next up, we have a Denmark, and Denmark is being represented by Saba, and Saba is coming out in this all-white suit, playing on that sort of a masculine, feminine edge, and underneath it's got like this mesh sort of detailing with these like rhinestones. They have paired it with some jewelry on top of the jacket to give you this very androgynous vibe. First, I will say I really appreciate the vibe. I love this mix of mask femme putting it together. I think that this is exactly what we need. I feel like this is exactly where fashion is going. I do feel like the outfit is a little bit safe and a little bit boring, but then again, we are talking about Denmark, which is known for like its Scandinavian and clean lines. So I feel like this would be considered wild in Scandinavia because of all of the sort of jewelry and pieces underneath. Talking about the jewelry and pieces underneath, this sort of dress mesh shirt thing that's underneath is my favorite part of this outfit. Uh, I wish there was a little bit more of it uh, brought into other places. The jacket itself is really plain, and like I said, I wish there was more onto it, whether it be a little bit more detailing, a little bit more rhinestones, a little lace overlay on top of it. I feel like it just needs that little extra to make it Eurovision worthy. Overall, I think it is an okay outfit. Not the worst. We are definitely have seen some worse ones on there, but definitely not the best. There are some great ones to come. Again, I feel like this fits right in the middle of pack as like, not great, not bad, and good enough to get a soft fab. Next up, we have Estonia, and Estonia is being represented by Five Minutes and Pulup. 
Girl, girl, I probably butchering these names, but just like go with it. I know I'm doing a horrible job and I apologize to all the artists, but just use it for entertainment purposes and just laugh at me at this point because oof, these names are harder than I thought. <laughs> Let's just say that way. I probably should have done a little bit more research. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get back into Estonia. Estonia is coming out with this a group of people and they are all wearing tuxedos. Really girl, a tuxedo on a red carpet groundbreaking are we really gonna go here this is the eurovision red carpet this is where you can have a little bit of fun and you're coming out with a tuxedo are you going to a wedding are you going to a basic white girl wedding because that is the only time a tuxedo is appropriate all in all i am so disappointed and i have no words to say that i'm not even gonna give this one any time of day and just go ahead and say that it is completely a draft next up we have finland and finland is being represented Presented by Windows 95 man. If Estonia was boring, Finland went uh, the other way altogether. They decided to come in in the wildest thing I have ever seen. They are coming out in this giant egg made out of denim, and inside there is the Windows 95 man, which is this guy with the Windows logo on his chest and is surfing or doing some sort of weird game. First up, how are you even allowed to use the Windows logo? Something tells me that this must be some sort of copyright infringement, but not my outfit, not my problem, and we won't get into it. Let's actually talk about this outfit. I feel like they went the complete opposite way. I love the overall funness and vibe of this. I can, I like that somebody actually did something because we've been getting a lot of uh, boring uh, looks, uh, and this one is not boring. The problem I have with it is, it is also not sophisticated or red carpet. I feel like they are just taking the piss out of the whole thing and making a joke out of it, and I don't really enjoy that. I like when people take something seriously, but make it fun at the same time, and I feel like they crossed the line, in my opinion. Now, having watched this band once, it is kind of their shtick to be this sort of like LMFAO type of people, but uh, not my cup of tea. And since this is my show and my rating, I am gonna go ahead and give them a, a drab. Next up, we have France, and France is represented by Slimon, or is it Slimane? I don't know. But he is coming uh, dressed in these uh, black sort of like leather boot pants things with this white uh, shirt, this lace bulletproof vest, and this jean jacket. Overall, this is such a vibe. I think this is, this is the perfect balance of making it fashion, but making it stage, but making it red carpet. I feel like this has got the perfect mix of everything. And this is kind of what I was expecting from a turquoise red carpet. I love the black and white. I love the leather detailing with the lace. It's got a really nice sort of contrasting detail. I think the jacket brings it down and makes it a little bit more casual, which I'm not mad at because it isn't a red carpet, um, but I don't know if it's necessarily needed. But more than anything, I just like the overall vibe. He looks cool. He looks sure of himself. He looks like he knows where he's going and he looks like he's ready to stand out on a carpet. And in my opinion, considering a lot of these outfits, I think he did. All in all, in my opinion, I feel like this is one of the better looks and is definitely gonna get a bum. Next up, it's Germany, and Germany is being represented by Isaac Isaac, and he is coming out in this head-to-toe striped suit, for the lack of better words. Well, it's more of like a shirt and a pair of pants with a black t-shirt underneath. And again, this is very eh. This is far too plain for a turquoise carpet. I am almost wondering if these people understood the mission, understood the point. I feel like most of these people probably need a stylist or a drag queen to help them out because these are feeling very middle of the road. Overall, I like the colors of this outfit, but that's kind of where it stops. I feel like this is such a miss and a letdown and I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a drab. Next up, we have Great Britain, and Great Britain is being represented by Ollie Alexander. Now, I will say that Ollie Alexander, I think, is one of the bigger names in this whole lineup, and I am pretty sure he falls on the LGBTQ spectrum, and therefore, I was expecting big things from him. But he decided to come out with this sort of very lackadaisy, uh, shirt dress thing and I'm like 
Girl, please. What is going on? First off, I like that he took a risk and decided to go in a in a specific vibe. I personally didn't understand the vibe. I think the colors are interesting, but it's got this like deconstructed vibe to it and very casual. It's very giving you like that that 2024 version of a hippie and I'm not really into it. I find that the silhouette is interesting, but then after that he's paired it with boxer shorts. Girl, if you are going to be doing an outfit like that, you need to be wearing some sort of jock strap or something because I do not want to be seeing your underwear underneath this vibe. I want to appreciate the outfit for itself. And my eye is just drawn to those underwear. I'm like, either put a pant on or put a jock strap on because this is not it. This is not how you finish this look. Then everything else around it is very casual. I wish, again, he would have done something to his face, maybe dyed his hair a certain color, maybe added some like uh, eyeliner to his face to really bring some of that like oomph and energy back into this outfit. Right now it's feeling very slouchy, very relaxed and not very turquoise carpet. All in all, not my favorite, actually one of my least favorites I gotta say, which is disappointing. And that is why I'm gonna go ahead and give him a drab. Next up, we have a Greece and Greece is being represented by Marina Sati. And Marina is wearing this off-white dress. What I do appreciate about this dress, it is not just like a simple dress. You can see that this has got a lot of like architectural detailing put into this dress. You can see that it is very well constructed. It is definitely giving you that sort of like understated chic, which I don't really appreciate. I like the more maximalist approach to things. So this one is a little bit like not my cup of tea, but it is a beautiful dress. I could see a lot of people liking this dress and wanting to wear it out. I'm just not sure that it is turquoise carpet worthy. All in all, I'm gonna say this is another person that's very middle of the road and is gonna, and therefore is gonna end up with a three stars and a middle of the road soft fab. Next up, we have Ireland and Ireland is being represented by Bambi Thug. And I'm like, hallelujah, we got one. We got somebody who got the assignment and is making a statement and I got so much to say about this. First up, I don't know this artist, but looking at this outfit, I want to know this artist. And that is the point of going to one of these sort of events. You want people to notice you. You want to stand out, good, bad, or indifferent. You want to stand out, and I think this does it in the best way. You can see that this creature has her roots in the drag scene or has hired some drag designer to make this dress because it is fantastic. It is like this blue dress that is made out of this latex that looks like it's just getting shredded apart. It looks like deconstructed in the most elegant way. This is so cool, but yet so grunge. I love this dress. I want this dress. And that is the first time I said this all freaking episode. And from a red carpet, I would love to be inspired by all of them. Um, and she is the only one that's doing it. Granted, this is the most draggiest drag thing I've ever seen, but I love it and I cannot deny that it is 100% gonna be a fast. Next, we have Latvia and Latvia is being represented by Dawn. And Dawn is coming out in this bright blue suit, but this isn't any ordinary suit. This has got like this asymmetrical buttoning happening. It's got this little strap detailing underneath. It is definitely giving you understated, but it's also giving you interesting elegance at the same time. I really love this suit. It's hard to make a suit look unique and somehow they did it with this one. This is what I feel was missing from somebody like a Denmark where I thought the suit was just too plain. This has got a few extra details in it that really brings it up to that extra level. Would I like to see it a little bit more? Yes, I love this like detail in here. I wish there was maybe a second one or that it went over the whole thing. Um, I also wish that there was a little bit of detailing in the sleeve, but that being said, it is definitely more of this sort of understated moment. I'm going to assume he is a straight performer just because straight performers don't like to wear a lot of like sequins and detailing and things like that. Either way, he looks good and I love this suit. This is a suit that I would definitely see myself wearing out of drag um, and kind of want. So for those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and give him a 
up. Next up, it's a Lithuania, and Lithuania is being represented by Sylvester Belt. And Sylvester is coming out in this sort of a white long jacket suit, and the jacket is made out of this sort of like perforated mesh material. He's paired it with a white shirt and just a little skinny black tie. But more importantly than any of that, he'd come with a full entourage of people with black masks, black jackets in all of these different vibes. And he definitely stands out around them. I love this look. First, let's break down Sylvester's look. I think that this jacket is really interesting. It puts another spin on a suit, which is really hard to do, but it's definitely giving you those suit vibes to make it appropriate for a turquoise carpet, but done in a new, interesting way. On top of it, he decided to surround himself with these mannequin people i don't know what they are but his entourage makes him stand out even more because they are really dark and he is really bright so he pops and not only that but you also think to yourself what is going on here but when you actually look at the people behind they're all wearing these like really cool leather jackets that makes the whole thing feel a lot fresher and vibier than everything else i think that this is the perfect amount of cab stage and everything that's going on this is how you do a carpet like this this is what i was expecting from a carpet like this all in all i love this look and it is definitely going to be a bomb. next up we have luxembourg and luxembourg is being represented by tali but tali is coming out in this one piece a jumpsuit with a leather jacket and little pigtails first let's talk about this jacket i love this jacket it's really edgy it's got a lot of detailing on it it really feels cool but it also feels elevated as a leather jacket so it kind of has that perfect mesh of like is it stage is it red carpet is it just somebody who's just got a lot of style and i love this jacket but that's kind of the only thing i love the piece underneath, the idea of having a, a one-piece jumpsuit underneath, I like the idea of a, of, a, of a jumpsuit. I just don't think that this is the jumpsuit. I wish she would have gotten something from like Bang London, for example. I think that type, those types of jumpsuits work a lot better. Something with a lot more crystals, a lot more detailing going on, I think would have really complemented this jacket. This one underneath just feels far too plain. I also like that she decided to pair it with a combat boot instead of a heel. I think that that adds a little bit of that cool factor into it. So that I feel is a check. But then she decided that her hair was just going to be in some, some pigtails. And I'm like, eh, I wish there was more. I wish that this hair was a little bit bigger. I don't mind the pigtails, but maybe if she had some giant safety pins in it, maybe she had some like stones in it just to really bring up this this element of the jacket onto her head. All in all, there are some things I like and there are some things I don't like. I really feel like this could have been better, but it is not bad and therefore gonna get a bomb. Next, we have Malta and Malta is being represented by Sara Bonici. And she is coming out in this whole spike attire. She's coming out with this like sort of spiky dress with this giant hat that is full of little spikes and this little bag that is again, Full of spikes. I think this is so camp and so drag. I, of course, I love this look. This is a look I would actually buy uh, for myself because it's got that little bit of that edginess to it, but it's still quite feminine. I think this hat is a very statement hat. It really makes you stand out in the crowd. It makes you people uh, look at you, which is what you want. I think that it being all coordinated also works really well. The only sort of criticize I will have, and that's a very little one, is the dress itself. Um, it just feels like, I don't know if it doesn't fit right or if it needed a little bit something because it's just feeling a little bit square for me and I would have liked it a little bit like more cinched, you know, but that is just a minor detail. All in all, I love this look and it is definitely going to be a bomb. Next up, we have Moldova and Moldova is being represented by Natalie Barbu and Natalie is coming out in this white dress, uh, with this silver 
belt corseted detailing. So I like that she decided to go with white. It really stands out. It really feels fresh on the carpet. I think that that is an interesting take. And I also like when you have a white dress that doesn't look like a wedding dress. And this doesn't do that. I also like that the, that the sleeves go into gloves. It makes it feel a little bit more modern and a little bit more edgy, which I truly appreciate. Now, she decided to add this silver belt detailing, which I totally understand where she was going with it. To add a little bit of that like sparkle and jazz to it, I'm just not sure that this is the right one. The shape of this belt makes it look like she is pregnant because of it's like pointing and looks like this arrow. And the belt itself feels very dated. And that's sort of the problem. I think that had this been more of a body chain, I think it would have made it feel a little bit fresher than it just like sitting on her stomach, which is making it me feel like a little bit of like that 90s trying to do elegance, you know, like that BCBG sort of era, which I'm like not that into. That being said, it is definitely not the worst and still good enough to get a soft bath. Next up, we have the Netherlands and the Netherlands is being uh, represented by Joost Klein. And Joost is coming out in this blue suit with these uh, giant shoulders and he decided to come with his entourage with a man in a European shirt and a blue parrot. First, let's talk about Yoast. I think that this take on a suit is really smart and fun. It, it got that little bit of the camp factor, but keeping the suit into it. The part that I both love and hate is that if you've watched his music video, this is the exact suit he used in his music video for the song that he will be presenting. So I do like that there is a reference, but I almost wish that it wasn't there because then I would have appreciated the suit that much more because I've already seen this suit. So it, it, it didn't come as a surprise. I just hope that he doesn't actually use this suit in his performance because then I feel like it would be overkill. I want you to switch it up. I want you to give me sort of uh, different moments. That being said, this suit has already become iconic. He's then decided to bring this entourage with him and I'm like, I'm not sure about this entourage. I don't know why it's needed. Um, I don't know what the bird has to do with anything. So that's where you sort of lost me and you're getting me into like Windows 95 territory where you're just taking the mick out of things. And that's where I'm like, eh. That being said, I do love the suit and I do love the look and that is why it is gonna be a bad. Next up, we have a Norway and Norway is being represented by Gate. And Gate is this a group made up of five members with what I'm going to assume is a one female lead singer. I have not seen their acts yet, so I don't know how these people intertwine together, but as a set, I love it. I think black is not the best choice for a sort of like red carpet thing because you do not get to see all the beautiful detailing into it. People do like to look at bright colors and black sort of fades into the background. That being said, once you start to look at this black, you see how cool it is. They have straps, they have leather, they have jackets, they have buttons. There's a lot going on in these outfits, but it doesn't feel over the top. On top of it, you can see that they were all styled together. Yes, they have individualities into them, but they feel like a unit and I want my groups to feel like a unit. All in all, I think this is very well done and definitely worth a bum. Next up, we have Poland and Poland is being represented by Luna and Luna is coming out in this long, red dress and there's a pause there on purpose because that's pretty much my reaction which is meh it's a red dress does she look good in it yes do I have anything to say about it no so ultimately it's gonna be a meh and a meh gets a soft fab move on next let's go next up we have a portugal and portugal is being represented by yolanda and she's coming out in this black lace dress i love the idea of a black lace especially sequence black lace because i think that that could be really elegant we saw that being done really well with armenia which i thought she was so sophisticated in armenia the problem i have with portugal is that i just don't find this very flattering first up she is quite a large chested woman and therefore her her breasts do not really feel like they are secure i wish that they were a little bit more hyped up i think that this would have looked a lot better had she been wearing like 
a black bra underneath to kind of give you that sexy peekaboo a moment. Right now, everything just feels like loosey goosey. Then she decided to do a slit up uh, the side of her leg, which a slit is generally always a sexy and great choice. But because the whole dress is a little bit mesh, I kind of was like, what is the point? I think had she done the slit, I think it would have actually looked better with like leather pants underneath because then it would have given you a little bit more of a moment. Right now, you're seeing skin and skin. It's just a little bit too much skin for me. And I don't mean like too much skin because I'm a prude, just too much skin because I need a little like contrast. That's what I mean. She then paired it with a boot and I think this would have looked better with a heel because the dress itself is already kind of grungy. I think it would have looked better with a heel to try to make it a little bit more sophisticated. Right now the boot sits at a very weird spot and it is not like a statement boot. Had she wanted to do a boot, I think it would have been cooler if she had done it in like silver or something just to like contrast. I think that that's really what's missing for this look. Then we get into our hair and makeup and it looks fine. I wish she would have added hair and just done it a little bit taller, but I do like the black sort of matrixy vibe to it. All in all, this is not my favorite and it doesn't flatter her. And that is why I'm gonna go ahead and give it a draft. Next up, we have San Marino and San Marino is being represented by Megara. And Megara is this a group. Oh my god. The group is coming out in these uh, black and pink outfits. First up, they all look individual in their styles, but they all look cohesive as a group. Once you start looking at each one of their individual styles, um, you are definitely getting feathers, you're getting chains, you're getting leather, you're getting a hood, you're getting sunglasses, you're getting a little bit of everything, and maybe it's a little bit too much, but I love it. I feel like they look cohesive, they look like a unit. Um, it might be a little bit too much, but again, it's Eurovision, so you can be a little bit too much. I actually am happy that people are going in this direction. This is where I feel like they've really understood the idea of like music meets fashion meets red carpet. I feel like this is the perfect sort of intertwined mess. My favorite of this is the guy on the left who's got this black jacket with these sort of like feathers, these pink feathers on the shoulders. It definitely is giving you a vibe, but more importantly, it's the vibe that they give as a whole that really matters. And the vibe that they are giving is fantastic. That is why I am going to go ahead and give them a sub. Next up, we have Slovenia. And Slovenia is being represented by Raven. And Raven is coming out in this black leather jacket that goes all the way to the floor. She's paired it with this black skirt and this sort of detailed top. First, let's talk about the top. I love this top. It is sheer, but it is sort of all covered up. It is really sort of a, the moment and I love it. I am almost mad that she covered it up with this jacket because the, the jacket feels very pedestrian compared to this beautiful top. I also think that if she had lost the jacket, um, she would have actually looked a lot more elegant on the red carpet and now it is giving a little bit more of those casual vibes. Now, you probably could do a little bit more casual vibes because it is a turquoise carpet and not like an actual red carpet. So I can kind of understand her vision and she probably wanted to cover her probably nipples, hence the jacket. I personally think that it would have looked a lot sexier with just the shirt and she could have found a way to cover the nipples with some of the detailing that's in the top. The skirt itself is very much a little bit of a throwaway, but I'm okay with that because it gives the contrast to the top. All in all, I love the top, but it is a little bit hidden and that is why I can't give her top marks, but it is gonna be good enough to get a but next up, it's Spain, and Spain is being represented by Nebulosa, uh, which is this trio band. They are uh, coming out in all black, but unlike Norway, they are not doing it for me. The lady in the middle, she's got her specific vibe that's got that sort of like grunge vibe to it, uh, which I'm really loving. The side by side to her, a look basic AF. Honestly, any single person has this in their wardrobe and that is sort of the problem. You are on Eurovision. We need to see some drama. We need to see the moment. And really these two people just said, oh, let me wear black. Girl, please. 
The most interesting part about this whole trio is actually when you zoom out and you see that these that she's holding these sort of like two guys on chains and those guys are dressed in beige with fur on them and they've got smoked out eyes and I'm thinking those guys know what's going on more than the artist. If your accessory steals the show over your artist, you have a problem, girl. And that is why I am gonna go ahead and give them a drab. Next up, oh, we have a Sweden, and Sweden is being represented by Marcus and Martinez. Now, fun fact, Marcus and Martinez are actually not even from Sweden, they are from Norway. So tell me why they are representing Sweden in this competition. That being said, these twinks look good. They are coming out dressed in head-to-toe -to -toe denim. It is definitely giving me flashbacks of Britney and Justin back when they were on the MTV Awards, but like bringing it a little bit modern to today. It definitely feels just a sophistication enough to be a turquoise red carpet, but just attitude enough to say, to say, hey, I'm too cool to be here. It is definitely the Gen X way to do a red carpet, and I'm loving it. It's got a little bit of deconstruction, and they each give in their own personalities. They know they are the shit, and I'm loving every minute of it, and that's why they are getting a bum. And last but not least, we have a Switzerland, and Switzerland is being represented by Nemo. And Nemo is coming out in this sort of blue jacket thing. For when I first saw it, I saw it just from the waist up. And I thought it was really cool. It's got a lot of that pleated detail. It's got a little bit of a peekaboo. And I'm like, I really love this. I want to see what this full look looks like. So I Googled and I found the full look. And once I saw the full look, I was a little bit disappointed because it actually just feels like sort of a giant, it feels like this giant coat dress thing. Now I'm not mad that this person is wearing a dress. I'm mad about how big it is. It makes Nemo look so tiny inside, like they are floating in their sort of a grandma's dress. And that is so disappointing. This had a lot of potential for me. That being said, this is a really cool outfit. Um, I just wish it was fitted a little bit, and I think that that would have just really taken it up to the next level. Despite my criticism on fit and structure, I like that they took a chance. I think that the blue is a bold color. It's got a lot of really good, interesting detail into it, and that is why I'm going to go ahead and give them a thumb. And that is it for this episode. That is a 31 looks that I did a fab or drab for. What did you guys think of this concept? Do you like me doing some red carpet stuff? Do you want, do you like me doing more Eurovision stuff? If so, go ahead and leave a comment down below because I am uh, reading them and I might be doing another one on maybe the performance or maybe a Met Gala, you tell me. But enough about that, uh, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So my drab of the week this week has to go to oh. Estonia. Honestly, I had nothing to say. It was basic AF and really was just like not my cup of tea. A bunch of white men in some suits. Girl, bye. Next. But enough about the negative. Let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... I know you are as surprised as I am. There were some great outfits with people like Malta or uh, Ireland, but I felt like those were too predictable and you guys knew that I was probably gonna choose those. But I ended up going with a Lithuania because I felt that this was just the right amount of sophistication, but just the right amount of theater. I thought uh, it's hard to stand out as a man. As a woman, you have so many more options in clothing. And the fact that he stood out wearing a suit, I thought was so genius. And that's why I gave them my fab of the week. Y'all, that is it for this week's episode. What did you guys think of this episode? Are you excited for Eurovision? Do you want to see me do more of these sort of red carpet moments critiquing different looks? Do you want me to see me do more Eurovision content? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.